Hey guys, welcome back to another video by Fully Informed Trade or Fi Trade for short knowledge for everyone. My name is Alex Cho, and today I'm just gonna go ahead and sit outside out in public and uh, basically talk about the markets as we go ahead and sit down and analyze what in the world's going on. First of all, the dollar index has pulled back from around 78.50. Again, it's not a very you know, um, it's it's kind of important, but not the most important of resistance levels, but it is definitely a legitimate one. So we're kind of pulling back from it. Uh, the main reason why the dollar index is having a harder time getting a bid in its market is basically because of the euro US dollar pair. So you can go ahead and see the euro US dollar has uh, basically got a pretty decent bounce. The main reason why is because of the super committee. Um, they, they're having a hard time agreeing on whether or not they want to tax the Americans more while using um, some, I guess, spending cuts and some tax hikes. And basically, the Republican Party has basically won this just because of the fact that they're going to automatically have um, humongous austerity here in the United States. Now, austerity is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just something that's going to have to happen. Because either way, whichever way you look at it, whether you raise taxes or you um, cut spending, it's still going to negatively impact the market one way or another. And it's still austere measures, regardless of which way you want to look at it. Uh, when you have humongous spending cuts of around $1.2 trillion, the main thing you can basically anticipate is uh, less spending. Less spending means less economic growth, at least over the short term, and uh, that's going to negatively hamper uh, U.S. growth. So, again, a lot of people who work those government jobs or are affected by the government jobs or the public sector will no longer have, un will no longer have employment. So, again, a lot of people will lose their jobs, and therefore you're going to see mortgages um, probably going to see more bankruptcies in the near future. Not necessarily a bad thing over the longer term, but over the short term it is negative for the U.S. economy. Now looking closer at the Euro U.S. dollar, we got a pretty nice bounce off of it. And that's pretty much what caused the U.S. dollar index to have a pretty nice pullback off of it. Remember the Euro U.S. dollar is a 50% weighting on the dollar index. And whenever the dollar index has a pretty decent pullback, or a small pullback at the very least, it likes to give the stock markets a little bounce. So let's go ahead and analyze the um, Dow component, if I can go ahead and pull it up real quick for you guys. Um, Alright, so there's a Dow component chart, Dow Jones 30. Uh, we basically ran into that 50 day moving average right there, as you guys can go ahead and see. No, it's actually the 20 day moving average, sorry about that. Uh, it's kind of, no, actually it was the 50 day. <laughs> but we ran into that 50 day moving average, we kind of pierced it with a candlestick, and then we're basically right above it again. So, again, we can see a short term uh, bounce in the stock market based on trading algorithms. Um, I don't really think this 50 day moving average will be of much support for a very long time. Perhaps you'll see a one, two day bounce and then we'll most likely continue heading lower based on the negative outlook of how the US government is going to manage their debt. And uh, basically speaking, whether you tax, whether you raise taxes to pay the bills or you fire people to pay the bills, it still has a negative impact on the economy one way or another. So it's kind of a moot point. Um, Austerity is just austerity no matter which way you look at it when you quantify it from a monetary standpoint It still means money lost some form some way somehow uh, It's just the way it's lost that kind of differs so again austerity in the United States austerity in the European zone the Only place that has not seen much austerity is the Asian economies and even then the Asian economies are in question as to because Again, Asian economies rely on Western growth, primarily European and United States domestic product growth. Um, if the U.S. and the European markets don't have much demand in them and things continue to look recessionary for the European markets and the United States, that really couldn't be much beneficial to the Asian markets as they do export out a lot of goods over into the United States. Okay. Now, the Euro-U.S. dollar, again continue to have a nice little bounce. There's not much of a support area here. The main, the main reason why people are fleeing into the Euro US dollar is not because of anything um, that kind of changed what was going on in Europe, but it was more because of the deficit committee panel out here in the United States. So overall, this Euro US dollar bid is much is very warranted, but between the two of <laughs> between the two evils, I think Europe is much worse. So I'd still stick with the US Treasury bonds over Italian or Greek Treasury bonds any day. And I'm pretty sure the rest of Wall Street is thinking the same exact thing I'm thinking as well. Um, gold. Gold has had a decent bounce off of that. Uh, I believe it's the 50-day moving average. I might be wrong. 
yeah, 50 day moving average. And I mentioned that in my previous video, nice little, nice little pierce, but then it has been able to kind of close right above that 50 day moving average. We could get a nice little bounce off that 50 day before heading a little bit higher. And then we could continue going down to that 200 day moving average. Again, the problem now is that the US and the European market or the European bond markets are in question as to whether or not they can pay back their um, loans. But again, the United States is still considered a safe haven because again, there's a lot of spending we can cut here out in the United States so we can pay off our obligations, whereas Europe is at around a 200% to GDP ratio. The U.S. government sits at around 105% to GDP ratio. So again, the U.S. isn't in as bad shape as the European zone. And of course, we do have a vast majority of the Fortune 500 companies out here in the U.S. as well. So overall, the U.S. fundamentals look much better. But even so, there's a nice and reasonable reason for why gold is getting a bid in its market. And I think gold will probably reach back up to that 1,750 level. Um, I really, I don't like trading gold that much. I've seen a lot of speculation that gold is probably one of the harder markets to understand because there are many factors that go into considering how to trade those markets. Um, finally, the Euro Japanese Yen. The European Japanese Yen has had a slide to the upside a little bit, but this is more like a bear flag pattern. I've seen this time and time again, and uh, you know between the USA, the Jap Japan, and Europe, I'd have to say Japan is the best bet, mainly because Japan has the highest saving rate in the world. Japan has an unlimited source amount of money for where they can borrow money because the citizens in Japan do like to save a lot of their money. Um, so again, <laughs> huge saving rate in Japan. Plus, you got a bunch of European and United States banks constantly transferring their currencies into the Japanese yen so they can buy Japanese treasuries. This is a total win right here. I don't really think the Japanese bond market will have any will have any major impacts throughout this whole crisis and I do anticipate Japanese bonds to continue to appreciate as the euro and the US dollar continue to depreciate to the Japanese yen. That does it for me for today. If you guys have any questions leave a comment below and I will go ahead and get back to you guys another time. I'll have more for you guys in the weeks and months ahead.